Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Welcome back to another episode of Digital Photography One-on-One -on -One, right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, today we're going to be talking about some studio strobes and using them to freeze motion. So let's get started. Jose Liel asked, I'm a studio guy and I've always wanted to freeze motion. But every time I have a model jump or do something with motion, I have issues. When I use a fast shutter speed to freeze the motion, I get a black bar in my picture. I think my flash is out of sync with my shutter. Could you please explain how to freeze motion in the studio? Well, that's a great question, Jose, and the answer has two parts. The first part is understanding sync speed, that will fix your black bar, and the second is understanding flash duration, and that will help you freeze motion. So let's begin by talking about sync speed. The first step in understanding sync speed is understanding how our camera's shutter works. Our camera shutter is made up of two curtains. The curtains open to reveal light to our camera's sensor, sort of like curtains in your house open to allow light to enter a room. And just like the curtains in your house, the curtains in our cameras also close to keep light out. Now the curtains in our camera, well, they have names. There's the first curtain and the second curtain. And unlike the curtains in your house, which move horizontally, the curtains in your camera move vertically. So let's take a closer look at how they work. When you press the shutter release with your finger, it tells the camera to open the shutter. The first curtain opens to reveal the light to the camera sensor. Then the second curtain follows behind to hide the light. Then the curtains reset and wait for you to press the shutter release again. Let's watch that again. Notice in this animation that the first curtain opens completely before the second curtain begins to follow. This only happens at slower shutter speeds usually speeds under two hundredth of a second. Now watch what happens when we speed things up. When the shutter speed is faster, the second curtain can't wait for the first curtain to open all the way. If it does, it won't make it across in time. Notice in this animation that the shutter is never fully open. It just reveals a slit of light as it travels across the sensor. And the slit becomes smaller as the shutter speed increases. Well, now that you know how your camera's shutter works, we can begin to talk about sync speed. Sync speed is the fastest shutter speed on your camera that allows the first curtain to fully open before the second curtain begins to follow. In other words, it's the fastest shutter speed you can use with a studio strobe. Now let's take another look at that animation, but this time, let's see how our shutter works with a flash. When our camera's shutter speed is set to sync speed or slower, a few things happen. When you push your shutter release button, the first curtain opens. And as soon as the first curtain is fully open, the flash fires. Then the second curtain closes. Normally, if we have our shutter speed too high, we'd have problems. Let's take a look. When you press your shutter release, the first curtain will begin to open. But before it's fully open, the second curtain begins to close. When the first curtain is fully open, the flash fires just like it did before but this time part of the sensor is covered by the second curtain. This will cause our photo to have a black area, and the faster your shutter speed, the more black you'll have in your photo. Well, that answers the first part of the question. You're getting a black bar in your pictures because you're setting your camera's shutter speed too high. Now, what about the second part of the question? If you can't use a faster shutter speed to freeze motion, then how do you do it? To answer that question, we're gonna head to the studio. Well, we're here in the studio, and here is our model. She's Bella, and uh, I'm gonna show you how we have things set up. Now, to keep things really simple, we have a single pro photo head here, and my camera is set to its sync speed, which is 250th of a second. It's at ISO 100, and I've already metered Bella at F8. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna take a couple of shots. Now, this first shot, what I'm doing is I'm gonna shoot with my strobe off. I'm gonna do that by turning off my pocket wizard so it won't fire. So Bella, look right at me, beautiful. Okay. Now, if we look at that picture, you can see it's totally black. There's nothing in the image. And what that means is that these settings on my camera, the camera isn't picking up any of the ambient light. It can't see anything. Everything is dark. So now, let me turn on my flash, and we're going to take another picture here. So look right at me. There we go. Excellent. Okay. Now, we've got a great shot of Bella. And what that means 
is the only light that my camera is seeing at these settings is the light that's coming from the flash. Now that has a lot of very important implications and we can start to talk about flash duration. Now what flash duration is, it's the uh, length of time that the flash is on. So the flash comes on, it stays on, and then it turns off. And it does that for a specific period of time. On this strobe, that's about 32 hundredths of a second, which is very, very uh, short and fast. So what that means is, because my camera can't see anything except for the light that comes from the flash, my effective shutter speed is 32 hundredths of a second. And that is going to freeze the motion. Now let me walk you through what's happening very, very quickly so you have this right in your head. So what happens is, again, the first sh uh, shutter curtain opens. And as soon as it's open, the flash fires. The flash is going to only stay on for 32 hundredth of a second, so that will freeze the motion. Then the flash turns off. Now the shutter is still open because it's going to be at 250th of a second, so it hangs there for a little bit. Finally, the second curtain closes, it resets, and then everything is ready to go again. Okay, now that again means our effective shutter speed is 32 hundredth of a second. Now if we started to slow down our uh, shutter speed, what would happen is we would start to see more ambient light. So it's really important to keep your shutter speed at the fastest it can go, which is sync speed, and keep the ambient light as low as possible. Now if we tried to do this outside in a bright daylight, it wouldn't work because these settings uh, aren't uh, enough to overpower sunlight. We'd get a lot of ambient light in. So we're going to be talking about how to do this uh, similar effect in daylight or outside um, in a future episode, so stay tuned for that. Okay, now another thing that's very important to understand is that the power settings on your flash are going to affect your flash duration. So flash duration uh, will sh become shorter the lower your power setting is. So at full power on my Pro Photo head, my flash duration is about 560th of a second, and at the lowest power, it's about 3200th of a second. Okay, now we're going to really push the limits here, and I want to show you that you can actually shoot with a really slow shutter speed and freeze motion only using the strobe. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to slow down my camera's shutter speed to one half second, so a half second. Now in a normal uh, exposure, if we weren't using a strobe, everything would be really blurry. Now for this to work, we have to shut off all of the lights in the studio, so we're actually going to be shooting in the dark, so the video is going to go dark. But you'll see, Bella's going to do uh, some dancing, and we're going to take a few shots, and we will show you exactly what it looks like and how we're freezing motion with the strobe, not with the shutter. Well, we've turned off the lights in the studio. My camera shutter speed is set to one half of a second, and we're going to start shooting. So, Bella, go ahead and start dancing. Well, that was a lot of fun, and that answers your question, Jose. Lower your ambient light, use a short flash duration, and get some great motion shots in the studio. Now, we've posted all of these shots to the Adorama TV Flickr account, so you can take a look at all the EXIF data and see the shutter speeds and judge for yourself on how well we did to freeze the action. Now, if you're like Jose and you have a question about photography, you can send it to me at askmark at adorama.com, and we just might use it in a future episode. Well, thanks for joining us, and I'll see you next time. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.